Yeah. All right. Let's move on now. We just finished solving one and two variable and multivariable equations, correct? Just took a quiz over that. I'm going to take a look at those quizzes, hopefully tonight, if not in the next couple days here. Um, but we just finished solving one, two variable, and multivariable, multi step equations. Now we got to build into graphing these. I know everybody's favorite thing to do, right? But graphing is very important in math. So we're going to talk about how to go about graphing exactly what you just solved in the previous lessons. All right? Now, there are multiple ways of graphing an equation, multiple methods. And we're just going to talk about one of those today. And it's the most common of all methods. Can somebody tell me, based on what you've done in previous years, hopefully you've done some graphing, right, what method you've used to graphing these? Please don't tell me Desmos. Yeah. Y equals mx plus okay. That's the number one way of graphing any line or equation is to get it into y equals mx plus b. So let's talk about that, because that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. Right? y equals mx plus b. This is what we call what? Do we know what form this is called? Slope, slope what? Very good. Slope intercept form. And they call it slope intercept form because if it's in this form, we know the slope. And we know the y-intercept of this particular equation or graph, right? So, when looking at this generic formula, what is my slope here? What letter does it deal with? M. The m. My m, or the number that is in front of my x variable, is considered my slope. My y-intercept is what? Again. Slope, intercept form. That means that we have our slope, and what else do we have? Yes? Which one of these is my y-intercept? Nope. Nope. B. B is my y-intercept. So if I'm giving you an equation of 2x plus 3, what is my slope? Slope is what? Two. Yeah, that is right, except slope is always, slope is the steepness of a line, correct? If we take a look at this line right here, the steepness from this point on my line to that point on my line is considered my slope, right? So that means I have some upward motion and some right motion, right? So it has to be a fraction. So how do I make two a fraction? So my slope is actually 2 over 1. It doesn't have anything, it's not the x. It doesn't have anything to do with the x. It's attached to the x, but it has nothing to do with that x. Okay? So you're not going to say my slope is 2x. I hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, your slope is 2x. No, it's not. Your slope is 2 or 2 over 1. What's my y-intercept here? 3. Is it positive or negative? Okay. If we have these two pieces of information for any equation right here, that gives us the chance of graphing this. Okay? And we'll talk about that here in a sec. The question I have for you, if we take a look at number one, we're going to go right into these. If we took a, take a look at number one, is that in y equals mx plus b form? x plus y is equal to, what was it, 5? Yeah. Very basic equation here, but instead of just solving it like we've done in the previous lessons, we're now going to graph this using y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. What do I need to do? Is that in y equals mx plus b? No. No. Why is it not? What is causing the problem? What do I need to do to get this here to match up with this so I can determine what my m is and what my b is, or my slope and my y-intercept. What do I need to do? What am I solving for? 
Exactly. So every one of these, to get it in y equals mx plus b, I must solve for y. Have we solved problems like this before for y? Yeah, we did a whole slew of them in the last two weeks. So how would we solve this for y? I want to get y by itself. The problematic area is the plus x, right? So what do we need to do? We need to eliminate that x from this side by subtracting it. What are we left over with on my left-hand side? Y. Which is what I wanted, right? And now what do we do now? You must subtract x. Now, we have to be very careful here because we haven't really talked about it too much, nor were we really concerned with it. But the order in which I write this is very important. Do I get 5x here when I subtract those? Do I get negative 5x? Can I combine those? Why not? One's a variable and one's a constant, right? So I can't do that. But what form do I have to have this in? What form do I have to have this in right here? mx plus b, right? So that means that my x value here needs to go in front of my 5 to get it to be exactly like this form, right? Because I can't graph it unless it's of that form. So what do I get? y is equal to what? Negative x plus 5 because that 5 there is positive, right? We can't combine the negative x and the 5. They're different. We already stated that. Now, am I in y equals mx plus b form? I am. What is my slope now? Because if I can determine my slope, and I can determine my y-intercept, I will be able to graph this. What is my slope here? Well, whatever is in front of that x, which is a negative 1, right? So my slope is what? Negative 1. X. No, it has nothing to do with x. Remember that. Negative 1 over 1 is my slope. Remember, slope is always a fraction because it's the steepness of that line, right? The rise over the run is what we're going to talk about here in a second. So my slope is negative 1 over 1. What's my y-intercept? Positive 5. Take the sign with it. Make sure you take the sign with whatever's in front of the x and take the sign with whatever is in front of that constant. So we know my slope is negative 1 over 1, and we know my y-intercept is what? Positive 5. Now, have you graphed lines using y equals mx plus b before? Yes. Okay, so this should be very easy then. How do we go about graphing this? Where do we start? And, hold on. Where do we start, and what do we do after that? I heard zero. What do you mean by zero? You start in the middle of the graph. Wrong. Yes. You start at your y-intercept. Because it's saying this. If you start at zero, let's talk about that. And then you do your slope, right? Let's just talk about it. Because I see it all the time. Let's talk about it. How do I graph my slope here? Now remember, negative 1 over 1. The top is always my rise, right? My bottom is always my run. Again, it is the steepness of a line from one point to another point on that line. So I rise and then I run. Always rise first and then you run second. So this means negative one, I do what? You go down one and what? To the right one. Which way, to, which way one? To the right or to the left? It depends right. on whether this is positive or negative. It's what? Positive. Positive, so you must move in the positive direction. You go down because it's negative, and you move to the positive side because it's positive. So I go right here, right? Yeah. And then I continue because it has a similar slope, right? It keeps going. Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one. Well, now if I graph this, let me ask you this before I do that. If I go in the opposite direction, what would I do? Um, Instead of going down one to the right one, I'd go what? Up one to the left one. Up one to the left one. Just the opposite direction, right? Up one to the what? Left one. Up one to the? Left one. Okay, now, if you, what you're saying is right, that is my line. But what did I tell you about my y-intercept? It's positive five, right? That would mean that, again, what is a y-intercept? 
Can somebody explain to me what a y-intercept is? What meets the line? Where your line meets the y-intercept, right? So a y-intercept, again, is where this line meets my y-axis. Does this line meet my y-axis, which is my up and down axis, right? Does it meet it at positive 5? It meets it where? 0. That means that this is not graphed properly. You cannot start at 0, 0. We must start at your y-intercept. And then from there, we can do our slope off of that y-intercept. Be very careful when you're doing that. I see that too often. That's not what you should be doing. You need to start at your y-intercept, which in this case is what? Positive 5. So I go up 1, 2, or 3, 4, 5. Plot a point there. That is one of your points on this line. And we're going to talk about what each and every one of these points actually represents. So now what do we do? Down one to the what direction one? Right. Continue going down one to the right one, right? Yeah. Down one to the right one, right? Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one. If I go in the opposite direction, what do I get? Left one down. Oh. Up one, left one. Up one, left one. And now I connect the dots. Now, that is a graph of this particular equation. This right here is a graphical representation of every solution, every answer that you get to that equation. Every single one of them. This right here is what point? But what is, what is the ordered coordinate point? What is the ordered pair? Remember, every ordered pair is an x, y coordinate point. Zero, five. Zero, five, exactly. Zero, five is a solution to this equation. If you plug zero, five in, you would get back a true statement. Watch. Zero plus five, is that equal to five? Yes. That is correct. What is this point right here? Five, zero, correct? Which means I would have to plug that in and see if we get a true statement back. 5 plus 0, is that equal to 5? Yes. So that is the solution, correct? Let's check this one right here. What is this point right here? 4, 1. Is 4, 1 a solution? Well, plug it in. 4 for x, 1 for y. What is 4 plus 1? 5. 5. Is 5 equal to 5? Yeah. The solution, right? We could test all these all, all forever if we wanted to. A graph here is just a representation of every solution that you have to that specific equation. Does that make sense? Right. Do we see how we went about doing this? The first thing you must do is get it into y equals mx plus b form which means you have to solve the equation, no matter how difficult it is. You have to solve the equation for y, correct? Then what do you have to do? Then what do we have to do? What did we do after we got it into y equals mx plus b? Nope. What did we find out next? What your slope was. What your y-intercept is. You have to develop a systematic step-by-step -step procedure. I'm going to be giving you step-by-step -step procedures throughout the year as we get into more and more difficult things. Step one is to solve for y. All right? This is more as probably writing down anyway. Step one, solve for y. Step two, determine your slope. Step three, determine your y-intercept. Step four, graph your y-intercept on the y-axis. Step five, do your slope off of your y-intercept. All right? If you have any questions, and then connect the dots. Make four or five different points on it, and connect our solutions on it, and then connect your dots. Now, 
Let's go with number five. So number five is a little trickier. So number five. A little bit more advanced than the one we just did. 8x minus 4y is equal to negative 24. Still can be done. You've done a lot harder problems in solving for a specific variable. What do we have to do here in step one? We got to get y equals mx plus b, right? So we got to solve for y. So we subtract 8x here. Again, we want to get it into y equals mx plus b. Subtract 8x. That eliminates it from that side, correct? What are we left with on the left-hand side? Negative 4y is equal to what now? We have to do the same thing to my other side, right? I subtracted 8x here. I must subtract 8x there. Now, where does that go? Exactly. This goes in front because my mx needs to be in front. So it becomes negative 8x minus 24. Am I done solving for y? No, y is not by itself. However, I see a lot of people graph it based off of this. Your y is not by itself. I am not in y equals mx plus b yet. What do I still need to do to get that y by itself? You've got to divide by what? Not 4. Negative 4. Because I want a positive 1 in front of that y, right? And if I only divide by 4, then I get a negative 1. Because negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. I want a positive 1. Okay, what do I get left over on my left-hand side now? Positive y or positive 1y, correct? And what do I need to do now to my other side to even out this equation? Divide this by negative 4 and that by negative 4 and do it individually. Because you might forget to do it to one of them if you don't do it individually. What is negative 8 divided by negative 4? 2 what? X. Positive 2X, right? And then what is negative 24 divided by negative 4? Positive 6. Does that make sense so far? Again, that's what we did on that last quiz you took yesterday. But we stopped there. Now we're adding the graphing portion into it. What is my slope now? Because we're on step two now, right? Find your slope. What's your slope? 2 over 1. It's not x. Just 2 over 1. Step three, find your y-intercept. What's your y-intercept? Positive 6. Positive 6. Step four is to what? Graph your y-intercept. Do not graph at the origin. Do not go to 0, 0 and do that. Even though I know some of us will. Now. Which one is the y-axis? Because that's extremely important. The up and down one. You need a label. Your x and y-axis. Then go ahead and do it. Until you get used to it, right? Now, where do I go on my y-axis? Up to up six. Up six. I plot my y-intercept. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now. What do I do from there? What is it? Would I go down to though? What is the top number here? Positive. Positive. Start by doing exactly what this says, and then you'll do the opposite after. Okay? So what does it say? It says go up to because positive, right? This is rise over run. My top number is my rise. Okay, or my fall if it's negative. My bottom number is my run. Positive going right, negative going left. Okay? So what am I going to do? Up two to the right one. Up one, two to the right one. If I go in the opposite direction, I go back to my what? I go back to my y-intercept to go in the opposite direction, which means I do what? Down two. Down two. You always do the rise or fall first. And what? Left one. Down one, two. Left one. Down one, two. Right. Now, these are all solutions to my equation. Now i got to connect the dots 
to get a good graphical representation of every solution, every single solution that I have to this particular equation. That right there. And again, I'm putting little arrows at the end because this continues on forever. It doesn't stop. There are infinite solutions to this. However, there's specific ones, right? We can figure those specific ones out, such as 0, 6 is a solution. Okay? 1, 8 is a or yeah, 1, 8 is a solution. Okay? Does that make sense? Now let me ask you this. Let me take it one step further. And it doesn't say you have to do this for this one, but let me ask you one other important piece of information there. What is my x-intercept? Based on this graph, could I determine my x-intercept? Again, we talked about y-intercept is where this graph crosses the y-axis. My x-intercept is where what? It crosses the x-axis. Crosses the x -axis. So where does this cross the x-axis? What is that now? Negative 3, or what? Negative 3, comma, 0. Correct? Either x, i, and t, I'll accept either answer. x-intercept is negative 3, or x-intercept is negative 3, comma, 0. Either one will accept. Okay? Now, again, I'm not asking you to do this in this lesson. With the next one, we will be. Okay? And I wanted to introduce it today, because I think you guys can handle that. Does that make sense? Are there any questions on that right there? I'll do one more problem. One more, and then you finish this off tomorrow. <laughs> and I'll go right to number 10, the most difficult one on there. Let's see if we can go through that one. Number 10. Now, that means don't just do, you should not have done one, and then on the very next graph, five, and then the very next graph, 10. Separate them. Go to the 10th graph and then do the work on that one. Make it easy. Don't forget, we're the ones grading your work. If we can't read it, or we don't know what number it is, or the numbers are out of order, we don't have to graph or graph it. We don't have to grade it. Now, let's take a look at number 10. What is different in number 10 than the problems that we've just done? There's two x's, which means what? What do I need to do to eventually solve this? Yeah, I'm going to have to get the x's all together and combine like terms at some point, correct? There's just one extra step here, really. That's all it is. Now, what am I solving for in order to graph this? Y. Very good. So I want to get the y by itself, correct? And I have two x's that I'm going to eventually want to get together. What am I going to do first here to get y by itself? What's that? Yeah, let's go ahead and move this x over to that x. Because I want to get y by itself anyway, so we might as well move everything away from it. And while we're moving it, we'll be able to end up collecting anyone. Through the process of moving things, we'll end up collecting. So what is, what do I get on my left-hand side after I add 5x? 3y is equal to what? <laughs> well, we're going to add 5x to this side, and x plus 5x is what? 6x. 6x. Because we can combine those, right? They're both x terms, x to the first terms. So we have 3y is equal to 6x plus 9, right? Correct? Can I collect the 6x and the 9? No. Why not? Yeah, one's a constant, one's a variable. So all I can collect is here. I don't want to add the 5x to this as well. That wouldn't do anything. I can't get anywhere. I can't add the 5x there, but I can add the 5x to my x, because they're like terms. Now what do I do? How do I get y by itself? What's causing the problem from y being by itself? That 3, the multiplication of 3. So we need to do what? Divide by what? To divide by 3. Divide this left-hand side by 3. And what do we get? Oh, y. y is equal to what? 2x plus 3. Alright. Well, again, we've got to divide this side by 3 and each individual term by 3, right? And we get 2x, like you said. 
And then what is 9 divided by 3? Oh, okay. Am I in y equals mx plus b now? Yes. Yes, I certainly am in y equals mx plus b. Okay, so what is my slope now? Okay, my slope is 2 over 1, right? And what is my y-intercept? Okay, my slope is equal to 2 over 1, and my y-intercept is equal to 3. Okay, so now I can go ahead and graph this. And where do I start? Up 3. What's that? Up 3. Up 3 where? Y-axis at positive 3, correct? So right there. If it were negative 3, you need to go down on the y-axis to negative 3, right? And then from that negative 3, I now do my slope, which is what? Well, again, positive 2 over positive 1, which means? Right, up 2, right 1. Up 2 to the right 1. Up 2 to the right 1. And again, the slope continues throughout. It's always up 2 over 1 because it is a line, right? And the slope of a line is continuous and the same throughout. 1, 2 over 1. If I go in the opposite direction, what do I do? Down 2 over 1. Down 1, 2 to the left. Down 1, 2 to the left. Now, I just connect the dots. And that right there is my graph of that line. It is a graphical representation. This here is a graphical representation to every solution to that particular equation every single one of them. And it continues on forever because it keeps going. Again, slope just keeps continuing in both directions. Do we have any questions there? All you're doing in this, as it says in the instructions for each of the following equations slash functions, please convert the equations into standard form or slope-intercept form or y equals mx plus b form. And then determine your slope, your y-intercept, and graph the equation. That's all you're doing. So what I've shown you on 5, 10, and number 1 is exactly what you'll be doing on the rest of these. Does that make sense? Okay. The rest of this is for homework. So that means there's seven other problems that you should be working on. You have time right now to work on them. Might as well go and do it. The process of solving these and getting Y by itself is a heck of a lot easier than what you've already been doing. So these problems shouldn't be that bad. Now the graphing portion will obviously continue to practice, but the actual solving portion should not be an issue. Okay? All right, let's get to work.